This is the technology adoption curve, and Rust is here, on the verge of crossing the chasm. Python crossed it in 2010, Go crossed it in 2018, making them wildly popular languages. But for every successfully adopted technology, there's a graveyard of failed experiments. Haskell, Erlang, OCaml, Elm never crossed the chasm. They found niche use cases, but failed to reach mainstream adoption. And now Rust is approaching its pivotal moment. 2026 will be the year we find out whether Rust crosses the chasm into widespread adoption or quietly fades away. And like any major industry shift, early adopters get the biggest rewards. So where exactly is Rust in its adoption cycle? The chasm usually refers to a tipping point where a technology goes from the early adopters phase to the early majority phase. There isn't an exact math equation for this, but in general, adoption explodes when a technology crosses the chasm. And there are three main indicators developers can look at to predict when a technology will cross. Production usage, ecosystem maturity, and jobs and talent pool. Rust has gained a lot of momentum over the years in all three. The only thing missing is the final push, which is why 2026 is gonna be such an important year for Rust. First, let's look at Rust's production usage. And the good news here is that Rust has already broken into some of the most critical systems in well-known tech companies. AWS uses Rust for core cloud infrastructure, powering services like Lambda, EC2, S3, and CloudFront. Google uses Rust in their products like Android. Because of this, they were recently able to drive down memory safety bugs below 20% of total vulnerabilities for the first time ever. And Microsoft has been rewriting parts of Windows and Azure in Rust. And this is the common pattern. When a company needs performance, reliability, and security, Rust is becoming the logical choice. But at the same time, a lot of companies are still hesitant. One big factor is that there aren't a lot of experienced Rust developers for hire, which we'll talk about in more detail later. Ecosystem maturity is another key indicator of whether a technology is ready to move beyond early adopters. So let's take a closer look at Rust tooling. But before that, a quick word about our Rust Live Accelerator, our private group training program. Over the past two years, we've been helping students learn and master Rust and land high paying Rust jobs through this program. We'll be accepting new applicants very soon. Spots are limited. Stay till the end of the video to learn more. All right, so when it comes to Rust's ecosystem and tooling, first we have Cargo, Rust's beloved package manager and build system. In fact, Cargo is the most admired infrastructure tool of the year, according to the 2025 Stack Overflow Developer Survey. It's fast, reliable, simple, and comes built in right out of the box. No setup required. Other than Cargo, many core Rust features have matured over the past couple of years too, such as async await, macros, const generics, and error handling ergonomics, which developers have come to love. In addition to the core Rust features, third-party frameworks and libraries have matured. There are plenty of production-ready Rust frameworks and libraries like Axum, Tracing, Embassy, and Clap to name a few. And first-class support for us in major code editors like VS Code, JetBrains, and Vim definitely make the development experience smooth and productive. The only downside I see is that Rust hasn't been popular as long as other languages. So the ecosystem still isn't as rich. If you're looking around for an SDK or one dominant framework for every domain, you might run into gaps. But with that said, in my opinion, Rust's ecosystem and tooling is definitely not the reason companies or teams would hesitate to adopt Rust nowadays. Which brings us to the topic of jobs and hiring pool, arguably Rust's biggest weakness. For a technology to reach widespread adoption, companies need to know that they could actually hire developers who are competent in that technology. And companies are trying. Maybe three, four years ago, Rust jobs were rare. In fact, they were nowhere to be found. But today you can go to LinkedIn, Indeed, and now the Let's Get Rusty job board and find hundreds of openings listing Rust as a required or preferred skill. AWS, Apple, Tesla, Figma, Shopify, and countless other startups are all hiring for Rust. And the biggest pain point I've heard from companies is that the talent pool of competent Rust engineers isn't big enough. For example, I've had multiple companies reach out to me and say that when they've tried hiring Rust talent, the candidates they interviewed didn't have enough understanding of async Rust, or when they were given take-home assignments, they brought back code that was clearly poorly written AI slop. They could tell that many candidates have only watched a few basic tutorials or did a couple of half-baked toy projects, which simply isn't enough. So let's zoom out for a second. Rust's production usage is rising, but Rust still represents a small fraction of real-world production code. Rust's core tooling is fantastic, but the ecosystem isn't as developed as other languages. Rust talent exists, but not quite at scale yet. The pieces are all there, but not quite where they need to be for widespread adoption, which is exactly why 2026 matters. 2026 could be the year that Rust crosses the chasm into widespread adoption. 
But before we get too optimistic, you guys know I only give unbiased opinions on this channel. So let's talk about the bear case first. The reasons why Rust might not cross the chasm and slowly fade away instead. The first major criticism of Rust is that it solves problems most companies don't have. Memory safety bugs are a real problem, but not every company is writing kernels or browsers. Python, Go, and even JavaScript are memory safe and fast enough in 90-95% of use cases. The performance you gain with Rust might not justify the productivity hit for most businesses. And sometimes, the robust type system Rust developers love to glaze ends up backfiring and taking down the entire internet. Which brings us to the second criticism. Rust can make simple things hard. Spinning up a web server in Go takes 10 lines of code versus Rust's 50 plus lines and multiple dependencies. Developer experience and productivity matters more than theoretical correctness for many teams. The third criticism and probably the most interesting point is that admiration may not guarantee adoption. We've had languages in the past like Haskell that were loved by developers, but didn't end up getting adopted by mainstream industries. So just because Rust has been the most admired language for a decade does not guarantee that it will actually get widely adopted, unless Rust developers continue to promote Rust in every team meeting. So that's the bear case. Okay, now let's bring back the positivity and talk about the bull case, why Rust does have a real path to widespread adoption. And I think the bull case is quite compelling in comparison. For way too long, memory safety vulnerabilities have been plaguing mission critical systems. These aren't theoretical problems, they're real and they cost billions in security breaches and downtime every year. Before Rust came along, if developers wanted bare metal speed, the trade-off was opting out of memory safety guardrails. Rust is the first language to effectively eliminate that trade-off and gain popularity. And that's why Rust is being used for critical systems. Right now, as we speak, Rust is powering authentication systems, networking stacks, distributed databases, recommendation engines, observability pipelines, and cloud infrastructure that millions of people rely on every day. These systems are fast, stable, and battle-tested at scale. So yeah, Rust can make simple things harder. But the companies adopting Rust aren't building simple things. So as production usage continues to expand, the ecosystem keeps filling in, more and more engineers continue to pick up Rust, and the industry continues to push for speed and safety, Rust gaining mainstream adoption wouldn't just be possible, it will be inevitable. That's the bull case. Now, I obviously believe that Rust will gain mainstream adoption. It's only a matter of time. And personally, I think 2026 may just be the year that Rust crosses the chasm. If we take a look at the 2025 Stack Overflow Developer Survey, not only is Rust listed as the most admired language, it's also highly desired. And Rust's popularity continues to grow as well. It's ranked 14th place right under Go if we look at all respondents. But if we switch to respondents who are learning to code, Rust jumps to 11th place, surpassing PHP, Go, and PowerShell. Now, the important question is, how is this relevant to you and your career? Let's zoom out and analyze the situation. The current job market for software developers is brutal. There are countless stories of developers failing to land roles. Companies are still laying off engineers, even the good ones. And the latest AI advancements are certainly not helping. Every single developer is trying to figure out how to stay competitive. So let's think this through together. Now we could be doomers and say, you know what, software is dead. AI will take over every job, so I'm just not going to invest in any software development skill set at all. But that's defeatist and doesn't quite make sense, right? Even if, say 10, 15 years from now, programming doesn't exist in the way that we know it today, I still think there will be plenty of technical problems and challenges left for us to solve. And let's just say that's not the case. And we'll be living in some type of AI utopia down the line. What about the jobs now? Who's going to fill the current demand for software developers? Now, to be fair, some positions like front-end and mobile developers have fallen in demand because of AI and automation. But other positions like AI infrastructure, data processing, robotics, embedded systems, blockchain, low-level chip development are increasing in demand. And these are all domains where Rust is being actively adopted. So I think the more pragmatic approach is to realize that, yes, AI is definitely changing the landscape of tech. Developers will need to adapt, both in the tools they use and the type of roles they hold. And that's okay, right? Because honestly, if you call yourself a software engineer and aren't constantly learning, growing, and adapting, then you're in the wrong field. Okay, so where does that leave us? Well, obviously, I think getting familiar with AI tools and leveraging them in your workflow is a must. 
On top of that, I think it's pretty clear that anything to do with the fields that we've mentioned, like AI, data, robotics, blockchain, backend infrastructure, is going to be super important for the next five to 10 years. So those are the fields that I would focus on. And besides learning the domain specific knowledge you'll need to know for these fields, I think learning Rust, which is used in each of these fields, is going to be a great way to position yourself in the job market. Especially now, as demand for Rust is growing, but the Rust talent pool isn't saturated yet. And 2026 may be the last year that this is the case. So if you want to take advantage of the current industry trends for Rust and become a professional Rust developer, you're going to love the Rust Lab Accelerator. This is a private group training program where we'll be laser focused on getting you production level Rust skills and make sure you become the type of Rust talent that companies are desperate to hire. We're opening 30 spots for the next cohort very, very soon. And this time around, I actually got a few surprises for you. So click the link below to join the waitlist. You'll be the first to know when applications open and receive the surprises I only give out to those joining the waitlist now. So tap the link, join the waitlist, and I'll see you inside.